reached out to Flow Plane and Patreon to ask what kind of videos they wanted to see. And overwhelmingly, one of the top responses was networking. So we decided, what? 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 I can't hear you. I'm filming. Oh. This might be a bad idea. Let's go upstairs. Everybody, welcome back to Level One Techs. And uh, we recently reached out to our Floatplane and Patreon users, and we were like, "Hey, what kind of content do you guys want to see, especially for like Level 099 stuff?" And almost all of you asked for networking videos. We were, we're trying to explain that in server closet, it didn't work out. Mm. Yeah, because that's a big topic. There's a lot to get to, but because this is 099, we decided, "Hey, let's start at the very bottom with stuff that you're familiar with, which is." your home network. <laughs> it's stuff from your ISP. I mean, don't we just instinctively know stuff from your ISP is garbage? This is your all-in-one unit from your ISP. Sometimes they call it a modem router. This one device is actually performing uh, up to four critical functions for your network. So what are they? The first thing that this is doing is uh, it's your router. The internet is a series of internet connected networks of which your home is just one. Your router allows you to, from your ISP, to connect to your overall network. The main job of the router is to make it easy as possible for your devices to actually use and share your ISP's connection. This is what it looks like when it's not garbage. It's, it's kind of massive, it feels a little large. Yeah, I mean, it might be possible to plug your computer directly into the internet through your ISP's equipment, but generally it's not recommended, it's not safe. Your router typically also provides security isolation to the devices behind it, so. We should also mention that not all routers look like this. Like people, Routers come in many form factors. But generally it's gonna have more than $3 of electronics in it. Can't really say the same for this. The next item is the switch. Now the switch offers the physical connection between the devices on your internal network. It looks a lot like the router, doesn't it? And in fact, in the all-in-one, you really it can't is. tell them apart that well. But a switch without a router is a much different animal. It might not even work depending on how your network is set up. So things couldn't even talk to each other because they don't know how to route. They made the ports blue because you're an idiot. <laughs> the big thing about the switch is speed. Because you have to remember that your network speed is not the same as your internet speed. You can actually, your network speed can be way faster if you have a good switch. Some common speeds. 2.5 gigabit, no, 10 actually, gigabit. That's not that common. <laughs> Remember, we're doing 099 networking. No 10 gigabit, no. I would say gigabit is probably good for some of those items. Gigabit's been the normal for like a decade. It's time to move on from gigabit, come on. And it is a great way if you're finding slow internal network speeds, this is the piece that you need to upgrade. Yeah, you don't want your internet speed to compete with your somebody copying something to the NAS. <laughs> Then we have the modem slash ONT. This is a cable modem. This is a cable modem that also does voice, but notice that it's only got the yellow port again, because you're an idiot. This is cable in and ethernet out. This is basically a media converter. It's really not doing very much. If you have an ISP that provides fiber optic service or something like that, it might literally be called an ONT. It just converts from fiber optic to wired ethernet, but wired ethernet, that's, that's pretty much the standard. You could also have an ISP that provides your internet service through a telephone line, and so it'll look pretty similar to this. You'll have a telephone line that plugs in instead of you know, a cable connector, but then ethernet out on the other side. You probably are thinking, hey, I really wanna replace that modem and get better speeds, but you might wanna hold off on replacing the modem until you've seen our entire video. Uh, the next item on the list is the WAP. Ah, oh, this is my favorite. No, no, Wait, no, 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 no. It's what? not Cardi B's uh. thing. It's wireless access point. There's one in here, you can't see it because it's kind of trash. Here it is as a separate device. This is a wireless access point. You can have even more than one of these for a mesh. Wireless is becoming the go-to communication type that we use in our houses. God forbid you have children. God forbid even further you have teenagers. You probably are getting your network heavily taxed by wireless devices. Using a better WAP can incredibly improve that. The access point is the thing that provides security and connections to a whole bunch of devices. I mean, everybody's got like four or five devices now, your phone, your laptop, your, what about Chromecast or stuff for your TV, your Internet of Things devices. Your toaster needs to be on the network. You know, honestly, it really does make sense for modern households to have multiple access points in a mesh, like three or four, even a relatively small house, but it's hard to do that with your ISP garbage. So I'm, I'm looking at all these devices, and to be fair, you know, I get 
one device from my ISP. Is this a marvel of modern engineering? <laughs> no, no, not really. <laughs> it does everything. It, it's but, so miniature. But not well. And the problem with some of this stuff, one of the f biggest issues, is you have to rent this equipment. Every month you're paying for their equipment, and they're spying on you with it. I mean, it would be different if this equipment wasn't garbage. More importantly, for your everyday use, this equipment is always going to be, almost always going to be, slower than what you can do yourself. Yeah. And everybody wants faster internet and faster network speeds, right? <laughs> That's how we're going to improve your network. I don't know, long enough timeline of renting equipment, it's probably cheaper. Now, remember the blue ports? You've only got four on this thing. But that switch that we showed before, that's a 16 port switch. And those are, you know, like 100 bucks, 150 bucks, not even. And you can get faster than that. You can get one that's got fewer ports. You can get a 48 port. You can go nuts, whatever you want to do. You can get better and more consistent coverage of your wireless with multiple access points. You know, Netflix and online gaming don't need to interfere with one another. You, it's within your power. Better security and encryption on yeah. this guy, for sure. Whenever a guest comes to your house, you can give them a different wireless network that's isolated from the rest of your network. That, that being said, you know, you mentioned, oh, this is only 100 bucks, 150 bucks. Don't buy anything just yet. You probably need to watch the rest of the videos in this series to get an idea of what you need to buy and how to set it up. But we will take you through that process together. And we're going to do one piece at a time and take more time to look at them in future videos. And we will be starting with Miss Cardi B here. <laughs> and we're going to be telling you all about wireless access points, which ones we think you should replace this garbage with and why. Eventually, we will replace the modem or the, uh, the network interface, the modem router. But that's going to be the hardest, and you're going to have to be the most uh, fully informed before you do that. That's the top of the mountain. We'll start you down here. We're level 099. Bye! <laughs>